Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our summer show train with your host, Gordon McRae. The Association of American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life, brings you the Railroad Summer Show, starring Gordon McRae, with Lucille Norman, the sportsman, and the music of John Rarig and his orchestra. And here is your host, Gordon McRae. Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads pays tribute to the distinguished American composer, Mr. Ethelbert Nevin, and to his music, which has become part of the rich musical heritage of America. The story of Ethelbert Nevin is the story of an earlier era in American music. He was born the 25th of November of the year 1862, and he died 39 years later leaving behind him a musical signature that would be deathless and timeless. Many of his songs you know. Some like this one may be new to you. But Ethelbert Nevin set this famous poem to music in 1900, and your grandparents sang it around the parlor piano. Nevin's own dedication of the song read, To My Little Choir at Vineacre. You see, it was written for the small girls who liked to gather around his piano on Sunday evenings and sing with him. He loved children. You will see that over and over as you hear the poems he chose to set to music. Down near the end of a wandering lane that runs round the cares of day, where conscience and memory meet and explain their quaint little quarrels away. A misty air castle sits back in the dusk where brownies and hobgoblins dwell. And this is the home of a busy old gnome who's making up dream things to sell, my dear, the daintiest dreams to sell. Last night when I walked through the portals of sleep, and came to a weird little den. I looked in the place where the elf men should keep a dream that I buy now and then. Tis only a sweet, happy dream of a day, yet one that I wish may come true. But I learned from the elf that you'd been there yourself. And he'd given my dear dream to you, sweetheart. He'd given our dream to you. Ethelbert Nevin was born about 15 miles from Pittsburgh at the family home known as Vineacre. The days were the dark, pain-shadowed days of civil conflict. As the nation grew up around him, he grew, and he kept pace with the nation for 39 years. As a child, he loved music. At three years old, he was singing songs, and by the time he was five, he was playing his own accompaniments. He came by his love of music naturally, because his father loved music, and his mother had insisted that a grand piano be lugged across the Allegheny Mountains to western Pennsylvania when she was but a young girl. They say it was the first piano in that part of the country. His father must have realized the influence of that piano when Bert came to him one day when he was in college and said, Father, I I want to make music my profession. You want to do what? I said I want to make music my profession. You mean you want to be a, a, a professional musician? Yes, sir. Why, Bert, no one in our family has ever had to descend to being a paid piano player. Oh, Father, I wish I could make you understand. I I love music. It's like bread to me, and it's like water. Why, it's it's even like champagne. Bert, 
I love music, too. I've seen that you had lessons. I wanted you to know music and to appreciate it. But for a respectable livelihood, I must insist that you go into some sort of business. And so Ethelbert Nevin tried to become a businessman. He pored over books during long, tedious hours while his heart hungered. He forced his fingers to push a pen across the pages of ledgers while his fingers actually ached for the keyboard. He doggedly tried to keep from thinking of music. But everything he read, every poem he glanced at, became music to him. The little toy dog is covered with dust, but sturdy and staunch he stands. The little toy soldier is red with rust, and his musket molds in his hands. Time was when the little toy dog was new, and the soldier was passing fair. And that was the time when our little boy blue kissed them and put them there. Now don't you go till I come, he said, and don't you make any noise. So toddling off to his trundle bed, he dreamt of the pretty toys. And as he was dreaming, an angel song awakened our little boy blue. Oh, the years are many, the years are long, but our little toy friends are. I faithful to little boy blue they stand each in the same old place awaiting the touch of the little hand the smile of a little face and they wander as waiting these long long years through in the dust of that little chair. What has become of our little boy blue since he kissed them and put them Yes, he read poems such as Eugene Field's immortal Little Boy Blue. And many years later, he would set those poems to music. Oh, he loved music. If he was to live at all, he had to live music. He tried again and again to explain this to his father. And at last, he was successful. He went to Boston to study and then to Berlin. And the years were busy, stimulating years, full of hope. Somewhere in between the etudes and the preludes, the sonatas and the concertos, he fell in love. Her name, Anne Paul. And she was all that no woman had ever been before, or could ever be again, to Ethelbert Nevin. They set their wedding date for January 5th of the year 1888. They were young, they were in love, and the world belonged to them. The day before they were married, Bert said to her, Anne, I'm not good enough. I, I never will be, but, but darling, I'll do everything I can to make you happy. I don't know how anyone could be any more happy. Oh, Bert, do you suppose anyone ever felt this way before? I don't. They may have thought they did, but they couldn't have. Not really. Not like this. No, they couldn't have. Not really. Not like this. Oh, I want to gather up the whole world and put it right at your feet. You have. Didn't you know? I, I have a wedding gift for you. Something I have fashioned just for you. And for this day. I found some stanzas by Charles Kingsley. I made them into a song, which is, well, it's my wedding gift to you. I have the manuscript here. I'll sing it for you. Oh, that we two were making Down the stream of the soft spring breeze Come sing with me. Like children with all that's Dreaming on the sword of some sweet trim dog. 
yours, just as all my music will be yours, just as I am yours. We'll be back with the second act of the story of Ethelbert Nevin and his music in just a moment. But first, a message from the railroads. We are so much in the habit of thinking of our railroads simply as the railroads that many of us are inclined to overlook what they really mean to each of the thousands of communities they serve. Of course, first and foremost, the railroads mean transportation, the sort of transportation which has made it possible to settle and civilize the American continent in a few short decades. They provide the efficient, economical, dependable, and safe mass transportation upon which our whole system of mass production, distribution, and consumption depends. But important as transportation is, this is not all that railroads mean to communities. They mean payrolls, payrolls scattered in hamlet, town, and city all over the 48 states of the Union. In fact, the railroads are one of the largest employers in this country, and at the present time have more than one and a quarter million people on their payrolls. These people, together with their families, number three and a half million a group about the same size as the entire population of the city of Chicago. The railroads also mean purchases, purchases of more than 100,000 different items, ranging from paper clips to giant locomotives. These purchases are made in practically every city, town, and agricultural community and help to give work to hundreds of thousands. The railroads mean taxes, taxes not earmarked for the special benefit of railroads but contributions to the support of such functions of government as schools, fire and police protection, the administration of justice, and even the highways, waterways, and airports used by competitors of the railroads. Essential transportation, payrolls, purchases, taxes. These are the railroads' contributions to the national economy. That's why it is frequently said that national prosperity is geared to railroad prosperity. That's one of the reasons it's so important to keep our railroads in a state of good health, for reasonably prosperous railroads are necessary to an enduring and satisfactory prosperity for our country. And now here is the second half of the Railroad Hours tribute to the distinguished American composer, Mr. Ethelbert Nevin. Ethelbert and Ann Nevin lived for a time at Boston, and then at Quincy. At Quincy, on December the 5th, they were joined by Ethelbert Paul Nevin, a handsome young fellow of nine pounds. Three nights later, Ethelbert was busy at the piano with a poem by Eugene Fields, writing a song for his son. The nurse said to him, Mr. Nevin, you're going to disturb the baby with that noise. Oh, he's going to have to get used to this noise, nurse. He might as well start right now. You see? He seems to like music. Paul, my boy, let Daddy tell you a story that a wonderful poet calls a Dutch lullaby. The story belongs to the poet, but the music, the music belongs to you. Winkin' and blinkin' and not one night Sail off in a wooden shoe Sail on a river of misty light into a sea of dew. Where are you going and what do you wish? The old moon asked of the three. We've come to fish for the herring fish that lived in this beautiful sea. Nets of silver and gold have we said winken, blinken, winken, blinken, and nod. All night long their nets. 
that say through for the fish in the twinkling foam. Then down from the sky came the wooden shoe, bringing the fishermen home. Twas all so pretty a sail, it seemed as if it could not be. And some folks thought was a dream they dreamed of sailing that beautiful sea. But I shall name you the fishermen three. Winken, Blinken, and Nod. And Nod. Winken and Blinken are two little eyes, and Nod is a little head. And the wooden shoe that sailed the skies is a wee one's trundle bed. So close your eyes while Daddy sings of wonderful sights that be, and you shall see the beautiful things as you rock on the misty sea. The old shoe rocked the fishermen three. Winken, blinken, winken, blinken, and asleep, Mr. Nevin. Bert. Yes, darling. Oh, that's a lovely song. You know, Anne, when I began to study, I thought I just wanted to play music. But now I want to write it. I want to put into music everything I feel when I, when I look at you, when I look at my son, when I look at the world around me. And so into music went Ethelbert Nevin's love of family and of home and of children everywhere. He was not a strong man. He lived but 39 years. His son would know him for 13 of those years. His daughter, Dorothy Ann Nevin, would know him for but nine. In the final analysis, they would know him best of all through his music. Children, we found this song in your father's things. Come over to the piano. I want you to listen to it. Sweetest little fellow Everybody knows Don't know what to call him But he's mighty like a rose Looking at his mammy With eyes so shiny blue Seedy angel 
shiny blue Let you think of what heaven Is coming close We are so much more fortunate than many people, my darlings. For although he has left us, we still can hear him speak to us in his music. He died in 1901, 48 years ago. He did not live to see Mighty Like a Rose become an American classic. He did live, however, to know that his famous piano composition, Narcissus, was finding its way to almost every piano in America. And he did live to see another of his songs sell 32,500 copies in one year. A phenomenal record in those days. And it was this song that had him worried the most. When he wrote it, he said to his wife, Ann, I don't know whether this song has any real musical merit at all. I guess only time will tell. And time has told. For of all Ethelbert Nevin's great catalog of music, this one song stands out above all the rest. Timeless, belonging to the ages. The hours I spent with thee, dear heart, are as a string of pearls to me. I count them over every one apart, my rosary, my Wrong. I tell each beat unto the end, and there are crosses hung. O oh, memories that bless and burn, O oh, barren gain and I kiss each beat and strive at last to learn to kiss the cross. So, for music that has become a treasured part of the musical growth of this nation, the Railroad Hour salutes the genius and the music of Ethelbert Nevin. As a lasting tribute to the memory of Ethelbert Nevin, the Railroad Hour is proud to present to Mr. Paul Nevin a scroll honoring his father. It is signed by William T. Farrisee, President, Association of American Railroads. And here to accept the scroll for Mr. Paul Nevin is the famous soprano of the Metropolitan Opera Company and star of the Kraft Music Hall, lovely Dorothy Kirsten. <laughs> Thank you.
Hello, Dorothy. Thank you, Gordon. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to accept this scroll on behalf of Paul Nevin, Mr. Ethelbert Nevin's son, who was unable to be here this evening. The music of his father has been a great source of pleasure and inspiration to this nation through the passing years, and I know it will continue to be through the years to come. Thank you, Next week, the Railroad Hour will pay tribute to the composer and author-lyricist of one of Broadway's recent successes, Mr. Frederick Lowe and Mr. Alan J. Lerner, and their great score for Brigadoon. You'll hear many familiar hits, and among them, this great favorite. And from the way that I feel When that bell starts to peal I would swear I was falling I could swear I was falling It's almost like being in love Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. The Railroad Summer Hour is written by Gene Holloway and is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. These railroads are your hometown partners. They are an essential, dependable working part of the life of thousands of cities and towns all over America. Railroads employ local people, often buy supplies locally. They own local property and pay local taxes on it. They are responsible citizens and good neighbors in your own hometown. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. So until next week, goodbye. Gordon McRae is now being seen in the Warner Brothers Technicolor production, Look for the Silver Lining. In tonight's tribute, Gordon McRae appeared as Ethelbert Nevin and Lucille Norman as Mrs. Nevin. And now for Lucille Norman, the sportsman, John Rarig and his orchestra, and your host, Gordon McRae. A hearty invitation to meet us again next week at this same place on your dial. We'll have more songs and a tribute to Alan J. Lerner and Frederick Lowy and their score for Brigadoon. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>